So in this video, we're going to be building a queen size bed. Now this is a traditional design uh, for bed, not my design. Basically, the client had a king size version of what we're building sh and she wanted me to build queen size. So I'm basically copying what she had scaled down to a queen size, which is actually a bit fun as a craftsman because it's a challenge uh, to try to build this. It requires veneering and curved trim. So there's a lot going on in this bed uh, that I look forward to tackling. To start off, we're using her materials. So they live on a farm, a ranch in Waring, Texas. Uh, and this is a scarpment cherry that they took off of their ranch off the Guadalupe River. And basically what we gotta do first is cut things to length and get the bark edge off. So luckily I have this big giant 36 inch uh, Oliver bandsaw that makes quick work of straight lining all these boards, cleaning off the bark edges. Uh, and then from there, I can start making parts. And so the parts we're working on right now are the bed post. Uh, there's obviously four posts. They're three and a half uh, square, three and a half inches square. And I'm working with about an inch and three quarter to two inch thick material. So I've got to laminate up three pieces to get the thickness I need. Um, so basically I'm knocking out um, six pieces at about 80 inches long. That'll get me both the headboard post and the shorter, much shorter footboard post. Once I have uh, everything straight lined, I can set a fence on my bandsaw and now rough out maybe, I think I'm probably at about four inches, a little under uh, in width and get just basically get um, two by four boards uh, roughed out. So like I mentioned, this bed is um, basically a copy of a king size version. It's gonna have a veneered uh, paneled headboard uh, with a curved applied trim. Um, so this is a fairly challenging build for me and honestly when I started this build I had no idea how I was going to do the curved trim. I managed to figure it out and you'll see that in the second video. So I have all my boards uh, roughed out here. Now I'm going to go to my joiner and face joint. Uh, make sure I have a nice flat face to start into my S4S machine. And this machine will go ahead and surface it on all four sides that's what s4 stands for and basically leave me a board that's ready to laminate together this machine uh, if you watch my channel you already know a lot, quite a bit about it it is a huge time saver when it comes to milling lumber um, by far the best investment i've made in any equipment it's not a lot of fun it's not that glamorous but it's it saves a ton of time So now I'm just going to glue up the three pieces to make the post. Um, obviously there's two of these, so there's six pieces total. I'm using Total Boat's uh, high performance epoxy here. This is the first time I've used epoxy to do uh, glue ups like this. A lot of times, uh, most of the times I use tight bond. Um, but I thought I'd try out epoxy how it goes. It's always, it's never ideal to um, build up out of your material. I always like to use solid, but a lot of cases you just don't have the material and this is one of those cases. So I thought I'd like to see how the epoxy holds up over time. Um, Plus, there's no water in the epoxy, so you don't have to worry about uh, the water being absorbed into the wood with type bond and things moving and crazy things happening. So I uh, thought I'd give this epoxy a shot and we'll see how it works. Okay, so most of this video is going to be focusing on the veneering work. And the first thing we've got to do is set up uh, the veneer back. So I have a platform that this white board is sliding into. That platform is perfectly leveled out. It's basically two by fours with a three quarter inch, three quarter inch thick piece of plywood. I use shims to level it out and get it perfectly flat. And then I put my platen in there, which is the white board. First thing I need to do is build up the core, which will be an inch thick. So I'm using two pieces of half inch MDF. And once again, I'm using the uh, total boat epoxy to uh, glue these together. I like doing that on big panels. I don't want to use tight bond too because it has water in it and it tends to cause things to warp and do weird things. Uh, the epoxy won't do that. The blue tape is just there to keep it all kind of held together because when the bag sucks down, those panels can move. So I want them to stay uh, flush and against each other. So it's always tricky getting it into the bag by yourself, uh, but obviously I managed to do it. Uh, 
uh, you can see as I turn this on, you can watch the bag kind of suck down, and basically we're just putting a ton of pressure on this and sucking it together, and it's referen referencing against that flat, flattened board, and it's going to come out perfectly flat. At least that's the plan. So fast forward, here it is. Um, I'm going to be uh, cutting out that top profile in it. So there's this little top profile that kind of the trim is going to follow. And I have a jig that I've made out on the x carf CNC, and I just lay it out, trace it. I'm going to rough cut the, the line out with my jigsaw, and then we'll use that jig to flush trim with a router bit uh, to get it all nice and smooth. So once I flush trim this, what I'll have to do is come back. The sides don't have to be banded because they're going to be buried into the post. The bottom doesn't really have to be banded because you'll never see it. It's down below the mattress level. The top, however, does have to be banded, which is challenging because it's the only curved surface on the headboard. So we have to band up this top with a very thin piece of cherry that can flex around the curve. I cut this banding out on the bandsaw. Um, basically cut a very very thin piece out and went straight to glue and taped it on and glued it. What I'll do is band the top part first, overlay that, and then we'll cut it down flush to that tight curve and come back and band that. And blue tape works great for clamping it on. So here I am making that cut I just spoke of. Taking that off I'll use a chisel to just pair that nice and flush and then come back and band that tight radius curve. You can kind of see too the glue line from the epoxy. Um, you see how much penetration you're getting in that epoxy. It's not a real thin line. It's soaked in pretty good in the MDF, uh, which means it's got a good hold. It's not coming apart. Oi. Drop my tape. So you can see how easily that little piece just bent around that radius. It's super thin, so there's not going to be a lot of room to sand. Um, but it covers that MDF and makes uh, a nice clean edge there. So now we head back to the big 36-inch Oliver bandsaw. Uh, we're going to resaw veneer, which this saw absolutely works wonderfully at. Uh, I think these are about 11 inches wide, and I'm going to use six veneers, three on each side. Now here I'm cutting probably about a heavy eighth on my veneer off the saw and then I'll take it over to the wide belt and sand it down to um, about an eighth of an inch or a little bit less. I have a piece of three quarter MDF that I'm using as a backer board. Um, on my sander and I've just put sandpaper on that back of board so there's grip and then I can feed these through with 80 grit and get them smooth and ready for glue up if you don't have this so this is what makes veneering so easy in my shop because I have the equipment obviously if you don't have this you can uh, use a cabinet scraper a lot of work there uh, or you can use your planer in the same fashion it doesn't always work, and in my experience, I've chewed up a lot of veneer trying to do that, um, but maybe I'm not doing things quite right. This wide belt sander I'm very fortunate to have uh, makes very quick work of getting this veneer nice and smooth and clean. When it comes out of the sander and I'm done, I'm, I think we're a little bit under an eighth. My aim is to be around 3.30 seconds to a sixteenth uh, finished on the headboard. So the next step, once I have it all cleaned up uh, and surfaced, is to edge joint. And this is a very simple, quick a method. I'm using the headboard core, which is already super flat, uh, as a guide for my plane to run on. And then I've just, this is actually the sideboard to the bed, and I've clamped the veneer to it, overhung it a little bit, so I can just make two or three passes with a hand plane and just dial in a straight joint. 
The one thing you got to be careful with when you do this is if you have a bow in your piece, you're going to follow that bow. It takes a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of fitting. Uh, in the video, it appears like it happens really quick, but I do put them together, fit them, and you'll see there's gaps. You'll see the hit in the middle, but not on the ends. So you just kind of work the middle out. It just takes practice, takes time. But this is a very effective way to joint your veneer and get it ready for glue up. Another way you can do it is with uh, a a straight uh, edge and a router bit and just get a flush trimming bit and write it on that straight edge um, but I prefer to use the hand planes I think it's um, way more enjoyable so you get a look too at that top banding after it's all cleaned up uh, it looks pretty pretty nice So I lay the veneer up, have a good look at it, make sure it all is hitting good. And uh, you can see how awesome it looks. It's so cool. You got the book match going. This veneer, since it's thicker and it's shot made veneer, I can just use blue tape to hold it together. If you're working with thinner veneer, which a lot of times you would buy from a veneer supplier, pretty thin veneer, there's a specialized tape that you can use that is much more effective in taping your joints together. Uh, but like I said, since this is thick and I have my joints straight, I can just use the blue tape. I got to cut this profile out on the veneer before I head in before I put it in the bag. Big mistake I made was I had too aggressive of a blade on my jigsaw and it kind of tore up the veneer. I didn't show that here, uh, but I ended up using a real fine tooth metal blade to cut this out, which was way less aggressive and much less likely to tear up the veneer. Okay, so everything's ready to go. I want to get this nice and clean. I don't want any trash or anything on the core. Um, and I'm using Unibond glue. I'll put the link in the description. It's a really good veneer glue. The application I'm using is just a roller sponge, which is not a bad way to do it, but it soaks up a lot of the glue. Uh, so there's a little bit of waste there. There's specialized glue appli applicators for veneering that are really handy, and I need to get one. Um, but basically, I, I put glue on both the veneer side and the substrate to make sure you do not want a dry joint here. You want to make sure you got plenty of glue on all surfaces uh, and make sure you get it all the way out to the edges. Don't leave any dry spots because if there's any dry spots, you're going to have a loose spot in your veneer and that's just going to cause a lot of problems down the road. About to run into problems I mentioned earlier, getting it in the bag on your own is tough. I'm about to tear the corner of the veneer here as I'm trying to do it. Ah, no. I said a few bad words and actually cut them out. So uh, just, you know, mistakes happen. Luckily, this is kind of a rustic wood and we can repair it and glue it back on. This is a breather mesh that I'm putting in. It allows the air to escape and go around um, the panel. And that does it for the first video. We basically laid up the veneer for the headboard. On uh, the next video, we're going to cut some joinery, get it all put together, and uh, basically do the applied trim, which is the tricky part. Uh, so stay tuned and check out the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think.